This video is going to have a look at plants and how they communicate. This is going to involve how they communicate with animals, how they communicate with each other, and how it's led to the co-evolution of plants and animals. The first thing we're going to have a look at then is how plants communicate with insects. And there are two different ways that we're going to have a look at. The first method then is by releasing chemicals to attract pollinators, to attract insects. So, for example, lots of flowers have got scents to them and that means that the plants are releasing smelly chemicals which attract the insects to them. The insects come to the flower looking for nectar and the pollen gets stuck to them which they use to then go around to other plants and to pollinate them. The second way they communicate with animals then is to attract predators of insects that are attacking them. They do this by releasing a chemical that attracts an insect which is a predator of the animal that is feeding off them. And they can also release a chemical that wards off insects in the first place. The next section then is going to have a look at how plants can communicate with each other. And the main reason they do this is so they can warn each other. So some plants will have leaves that can release chemicals into the air if they're being eaten. Now what this means is if another leaf on that plant or another plant in general detects that, it can produce a chemical that makes the leaf harder to digest. This would be unattractive to the insects that land on them, so they wouldn't eat it and the plant would be protected. Okay, this final section of the video then is going to have a look at how plants and animals have co-evolved together. There are two ways that we're going to look at and the first one is plants and insect pollinators. Now the example that you need to know for the exam is how the orchard and the moth have both co-evolved to adapt to each other. For an insect then, it would be an advantage if it was the only thing that could pollinate a plant because it would be the only thing that would be getting that nectar and the advantage for the plant would be if only one insect was pollinating it then it would be guaranteed that that insect would go to it or another plant of its type. So the orchard then has evolved a really, really deep nectar store, which means that only a certain type of moth with a really, really long mouth part can reach it to get to the nectar. The second section then is going to have a look at plants and the insects that eat them. It's an advantage then for a plant if it can produce nasty chemicals so that insects don't eat it, therefore it's more likely to survive. Likewise, if an insect was able to eat a plant that others couldn't, it would get more food and that would be an advantage for it. So an example that you need to know then is the plant ragwort, which is poisonous to most insects, can be eaten by caterpillars of the cinnabar moth. So therefore it will actually get a lot more food, whereas the other insects will die. So the plant will survive a lot more and that animal will have more food.